Now is the time to buy a Frank Lloyd Wright house. There are about 20 up for sale in the U.S., but be prepared for some challenges like, say, moving the house to a new location. Here to explain the caveats that come with owning a piece of modern architectural history is Wall Street Journal Mansion contributor Joanne Lublin. Joanne Wright, arguably America's most famous architect, free-flowing spaces, walls of glass, even dishware to go with the house. A lot of these homes up for sale now, but there are these caveats, and you say moving uh, the home is one of them? Explain. Well, there's a house called the Bachman Wilson House in New Jersey. It's a gorgeous house. Unfortunately, it's near a river, which as development has increased in recent years, has overflowed during storms. And into the house. Into the house. Ouch. They've had two storms that have brought more than six feet of water into their house. And this is a one you know, a treasure like all these right houses are for the most part that really ought to be saved. So the people who are selling it who are a designer and an architect have attached a very large string. You can have my house, but you got to move it someplace, not only drier, but in an appropriate location. We don't want this in the middle of Manhattan. So that makes the house just a little bit more expensive. What are they asking to begin with? Well, the, the base price is kind of irrelevant because you have to pay for deconstructing it, moving it, and reconstructing it. You will get their advice thrown in for free. They will also help to pack. <laughs> There's original right furniture, but an all-in price, we're looking at two and a half to three million dollars possibly. Wow. I mean, these, these, these Frank Lloyd Wright houses, most of them built from the 1890s to roughly the 1950s. Correct. And this man mid, had a very long career. He did, and for, but, both, but both for middle class and very wealthy families. But I would imagine these houses are starting to really show their age. What are some of, of the course. other things that people who are, have invested in them are dealing with? Well, they're not built for our contemporary taste. Plus, Frank Lloyd Wright had a particular view of what space was relevant and what wasn't. He thought garages were a waste. He thought basements were a waste. He thought attics were a waste. He tended to design very narrow hallways. So one of the couples I wrote about had to bring their furniture in through a window because it wouldn't fit down the hall. And the whole idea is to have the wow factor when right. you step into the living space and you have these soaring ceilings and these windows that bring you into nature. So Everything else is then very compact. So it's not like you're going to find a lot of amenities that you're used to in a 21st century house. Yeah, and I would imagine you can't uh, just expand outside the house, too. There's probably some r regulations about that. It, it depends on, on where whether it is. it's listed or not. But the other thing, just from a historic perspective, even if it's not listed as a historic property, you wouldn't want to do that. Right. But I've heard about some of these owners end up renting, uh, you know, places where they can store their belongings a half a mile away. Just because they want that. All right, Joanne Lublin, thanks so much.